I'm going to start this presentation with a warning. Resveratrol is a unique but controversial supplement, one that when used correctly can promote human longevity. However, if used incorrectly, it may also have the opposite effect. So today, we're going to be discussing the four factors that ultimately determine resveratrol's effects on the body. And that includes the form, the purity, how it's been stored, and most importantly, the dosage. So if you're currently taking resveratrol or are thinking about taking it, then best keep watching. And for those of you who don't know me and might be wondering, well, why should we listen to what this guy has to say, especially with so many questionable health gurus around? Well, all I can tell you is this. I began my journey as a willing human lab rat way back when Brian Johnson was still in his nappies. And over the decades, I've amassed a fair degree of knowledge, spent more hours researching than sleeping, written several life extension books, and provided hundreds of clients the world over with longevity-focused consultations. So if that sounds like someone you might consider listening to, then I think you and I are going to get along just fine. Resveratrol is actually available in two forms. There's transresveratrol and cisresveratrol. Now transresveratrol is the more chemically stable form, and it's this enhanced stability that contributes to its greater bioavailability. Transresveratrol, therefore, is the only form you should consider using. There is, however, still a potential issue with transresveratrol which can arise if it's not properly stored. You see, although transresveratrol is the most stable form, it's still relatively unstable, and it must be protected from UV light. Otherwise, it can actually transform into the cis version. And this can be identified as having occurred if white transresveratrol powder starts turning brown. Next, there's the issue of purity. Now, transresveratrol is commonly sold in purities ranging from as low as 50% all the way up to near 100% pure. And the greater the purity, the more expensive the powder. And notably, 50% pure resveratrol powder is light brown in color, while 100% powder is white. Now, 99.9% .9 is actually the purest you can buy. And if you can afford it, it's well worth the extra expense. Obviously, the higher the powder's purity, the more effective it will be. And that, of course, should be your main priority. But there's also a less well-known factor to consider. You see, the vast majority of resveratrol used in supplements is derived from the Japanese knotweed plant. And this plant contains high levels of a compound known as Imodin. Unfortunately, Imodin has the potential to cause gastrointestinal upset in those sensitive to it. However, with high purity resveratrol, there's no such issues. There's numerous plant-derived compounds that are beneficial to our health when taken at a low dose. However, when some of these same substances are taken at a high dose, they can become toxic, producing adverse effects to the cells at the subcellular level. And resveratrol is one such compound that behaves in this manner, with study confirmed by phasic effects, meaning that high and low dosages can result in opposite effects. At low doses, resveratrol has several longevity benefits and functions as an anti-apoptotic agent, safeguarding cells from premature death and damage, particularly in the heart. In fact, studies have shown that even the tiny amount of resveratrol present in red wine can activate longevity genes. However, at high doses, resveratrol switches roles and becomes pro-apoptotic, which as a result allows it to effectively induce death in cancer cells, thereby preventing their spread. Now that sounds great, were it not for the fact that as well as hindering tumour growth, high dose resveratrol can also depress cardiac function and inhibit the synthesis of RNA, DNA and protein. So in theory, may actually hinder longevity in the long term. This obviously forces us to question the current trend for high dosages promoted by Dr. David Sinclair, who claims to have been taking one gram per day of resveratrol for several years. Now, interestingly, Dr. Sinclair's very own study found that low-dose resveratrol was in fact superior at promoting longevity in mice, with a significant extension in the lifespan of mice fed a low dose compared to both the control group and those mice fed a higher dose. In fact, the more one delves into the available study data, the more evidence we find that low-dose resveratrol protocols are superior with regard to longevity. Now, I personally believe that Dr. Sinclair's one gram per day dosage is way too high and can't be trusted as a long-term protocol for optimal health. 
Now I do concede that studies have confirmed that dosages up to 1 gram appear to be well tolerated in humans. However, I would argue that there may well be a significant difference between what's well tolerated and what's actually optimally beneficial. We also have to consider the fact that most studies are of fairly short duration. While our intent of using resveratrol for longevity purposes is presumably to take it for the rest of our lives. So in defense of low dose resveratrol, here's a quick overview of the main reasons why I believe it to be superior for longevity purposes. Following that, I'll discuss how many milligrams would likely qualify as a low dosage in humans. Low dose resveratrol has been shown to partially mimic the effects of calorie restriction both in animals and humans, with a resulting increase in the activation of several longevity genes including SIRT1. All this while simultaneously silencing several aging genes. In particular, low-dose resveratrol inhibits gene expression profiles associated with cardiac and skeletal muscle aging and prevents age-related cardiac dysfunction. Neurodegeneration is also targeted with a small but significant reduction in age-related gene expression in the brain. And as if that wasn't enough, at low concentrations, resveratrol acts as a synomorphic, meaning that it prevents cellular senescence, seemingly by activation of telomerase, which effectively increases the maximum number of times that a cell can divide before becoming senescent. Conversely, high concentrations of resveratrol acts as a prooxidant, triggering growth arrest, induction of senescence, and apoptotic death in multiple cell lines. Low-dose resveratrol also helps control blood sugar, improves insulin sensitivity, improves mitochondrial function, reduces inflammation, and has potent antioxidant properties. So all in all, a pretty comprehensive list of benefits with strong study evidence to back them up. Now obviously we don't yet have proof that low-dose resveratrol extends human life. But what we do have is a strong indication of the upregulation of several longevity factors and a downregulation of several aging factors, which at the very least should help extend health span. And that's certainly enough to convince me of resveratrol's value as a longevity supplement. Now, based on both human and animal studies, and by using the dose scaling conversion commonly used to make dose conversions between different animal species, I'd suggest that an effective low dose for humans would likely be around 50 to 150 milligrams, with this dosage being in relation to your body weight. I'm 93 kilograms and I take 100 milligrams, which just so happens to be the size of my plastic scoop. But anything around one gram per kilogram of body weight should be fine. So the next question is, when and how often should you take resveratrol? Well firstly, irrespective of what you're using it for, resveratrol should be taken with a source of fat in order to improve its absorption. Any meal containing fat or even just a few nuts will get the job done nicely here. Regarding how often to take resveratrol, well for low dose use, every other day is likely optimal. Regarding when to take it, the only important factor here is that you don't take it before exercise. Resveratrol is a potent antioxidant, and taking it before cardio workouts may blunt the exercise benefits. So it's best to wait and take it a while after your cardio session, or alternatively, take your resveratrol on a non-training day. If using a high dosage, for example to treat cancer, then every day use would probably be optimal. However, due to resveratrol's fairly short half-life, it would probably make sense to split your dosage twice daily. And while on the subject of high dosages, it's my thought that potentially there could be an argument for the periodic use of high dose resveratrol as a cancer prevention protocol. For example, if one was taking low dose resveratrol as a long-term longevity therapy, perhaps occasionally boosting this to a high dose for a short period, say a couple of times a year, might be worth considering, especially in later life. I recommend using transresveratrol in powder form as this works out much cheaper and makes custom dosing a breeze. In order to dose the powder reasonably accurately, simply purchase a plastic scoop in the required milligram capacity. If you want to be accurate to the milligram, then a good set of microscales would allow you to do that, but it's really not necessary. I personally use this resveratrol powder from the aging research company Do Not Age. And that's because the lab test results on this product show it to be 99.9% .9 pure, which is absolutely the highest quality powder you can buy. Even better, 
I've got you an exclusive 10% discount code which will work for any product in the range. And I should also mention that 500 milligram filler free capsules for high dose use are also available from this company. Lastly, please remember that the information in this presentation is simply my analysis and educated interpretation of the currently available study data. There will of course be some who disagree with my findings, just as sure as there will be those who agree. Ultimately, we're all just taking part in a huge long-term longevity experiment, the outcome of which we won't know for many years to come. That's all for now, and as usual, take care, be healthy, and I'll see you again soon.